Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Dynamic Accounting, Finance and Tips. My name is Jolie and I'm a senior finance consultant at SA Global and I like to demonstrate out of the box features in Dynamics 365. Today's demonstration is asset management with the mobile app. Asset management is an advanced module and it is out of the box. However, depending on the number of assets that you have will depend on any additional licensing that might by, might be needed by Microsoft. Let's jump in. This demonstration is driven around asset management with the mobile app. Asset management is an advanced module for managing assets and maintenance jobs in D365 supply chain management. Today's demonstration is driven around a fleet of tractors and trailers for an organization that generates revenue from those tractors being on the road. So maintenance is key to this company's success. We're going to demo how asset management used with the mobile app can manage those requests. Let's start as an asset manager. So as an asset manager who is on call 24 seven and receives calls from drivers with any maintenance requests, we're gonna go into the workspace itself and under asset management, we'll see many different workspaces within the mobile app. Today, we're just gonna focus on all maintenance requests here and we're going to create a maintenance request. So this asset manager has received a call from a driver and needs to quickly, it might be two or three o'clock in the morning, and needs to make sure this maintenance request is entered quickly so that the maintenance manager, when uh, he comes in in the morning, can go ahead and address the request. So we're simply gonna to come to actions and you'll see the three dots here. So we're going to click those three dots and create maintenance request. So we're going to go to the drop down under maintenance request type. And here we're going to say a breakdown request. And we hear a knocking noise under the hood. As the description. Now here's where we're going to go to the drop down and we'll be able to go to the asset. Now what's common in the mobile app? is you'll see you'll have another drop down here where you can change the way that you want to filter. In this case, I can search by asset number or asset name. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and scroll to the asset. It's actually 125303 is the one that I'm going to select. Now, next, we're going to give an option for service level. And this is where we decide what criti criti criticality it is. In this case, it's very critical because this is how we generate our revenue. So we're going to select one. And then we select done. That has created our maintenance request. As you can see, it was quickly created here within the system and the asset manager can go back to sleep. Now let's go into dynamics. So we can come to our workspace here and we can quickly find our maintenance request management workspace. Now this queue um, is where the maintenance manager would come in, review all maintenance requests and schedule those requests to technicians. Now you can have two different roles. You can have a maintenance man manager and a separate scheduler or that person or that role could be the same one in one. So in this case, we see the knocking noise under the hood. We can quickly see if there's any duplicates, any other, um, so here we have another knocking noise, but if we go into this maintenance request, we can quickly see the unit number by scrolling down and seeing that this is asset 125303, which is a different asset, so it's not a duplicate. So we can come here, we can quickly create the work order. Once we create the work order, so we're gonna have some options here. We can change the service level. If we feel the service le level created by the asset manager is not correct, we can update this. Um, we do have to, to request the uh, change the job type. So is this going to be a service, a repair, preventative job, lubrication, inspection? This is all configurable based on what your company needs. So in this case, we're gonna do a repair. We have some expected start times and expected end dates. 
and we can select OK. Work order 41 is immediately created. We can click in this link here and take us directly to the work order to start our scheduling process. Before we do that, I do want to show you that if I refresh this, the soft refresh to the very right up here, that maintenance request leaves my queue. So essentially your maintenance manager would be working this queue until it doesn't have anything in here. Obviously you'll probably have more coming in and then they are filtered by service levels. So you're addressing the highest service, service levels first. That's really nice. So we can come here now and we can go to our work order management workspace. And so here from a scheduling perspective, we can come here and we can see these work orders are all scheduled, which is great. So a technician scheduled to look at those. We have one that's in progress and here's our new work order that we've just created. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that work order. Now what I like here is that we can come here and add some work order maintenance jobs note, job notes. So in this note, I can add, please look at the air pump as well. For this unit. And I know that it needs to go ahead and get fixed as soon as possible. So I can go ahead and dispatch this to the technician that I know is available, which is myself. I've now put on the role of mechanic. And I expect this mechanic to start at this specific time. So we're gonna select okay. Now, this is in a new status. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's new until we refresh and now it's been scheduled. And that's when the uh, maintenance manager knows that this has been scheduled with a mechanic. So now as the mechanic, we're going to come back into the mobile app. We start from the from the home page here from asset management and we're going to go to my work order job list. So this is where all the work orders that have been assigned to us. And the most recent, if we scroll down, will be at the bottom. So you can see the unit 125303. Let me refresh this. We should be able to get a work order number here. And if you didn't see my last video, refreshing by pulling down, it's very common on a mobile app, refreshes. You can see it refresh and then scroll down to the bottom. And now you can see that work order 41. I need to tell the maintenance manager that I'm in progress of working on this. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and open up this work order. Come into the work order here so you can see this is the actual work order itself. And update the state here. And here's the drop down. This is all configurable based on what your company needs. So I'm going to say now it's in progress and it's I'm actually starting it today at 842. OK, now I'm working on the tractor. I've noticed a few things. I'm going to go back in. Maybe I've gotten out of this app, so let's just get, get go completely out, come back in. I've done my work, I need to make some notes. So let's go back to that work order real quickly, scroll down to the bottom, work order 41. Let's see, so just a little bit of quirks here, a little bit of training needed. Work order 41. Okay, so now we're on work order 41. You'll see I can add some attachments, so maybe take pictures of what I've repaired. This is really easy to do. I've taken a picture from my phone. I should be able to come here and add. I can take a photo really quickly and add whatever attachments. Let's do that. Let's just take a photo and take a photo of my mouse. Pretend it's the engine. Use that photo. I'm going to show you how that comes through. And this is going to be repair of engine. And I'm going to hit done. <clears throat> Okay, so now we've got 
our pictures. We, if we have checklists, we could do the, we could check off everything we've done. But here, see the three dots to the very corner. We come to those three dots. So we've got several different areas. We can asset counters if you wanted to enter the mileage of the tractor. It's a great place to do that. Notes, maintenance, downtimes, and journals and tools. <clears throat> we could definitely put the tools that we've used. We can do the asset counters. We're not really going to go into that today. But notes, this is where I would come in and I would go to edit and see where I have notes here from the manager that says look at the air pump as well, which I did. So repaired. This is what I'm going, what I repaired today. I repaired the brake drum. And air filter. Or air pump, I'm sorry. <clears throat> air pump. Okay, so pretty easy to enter that information in and hit done. Now we need to enter our costs. So here I'm going to go back to where I was. You see the journals there, and this is where I start entering how many hours I worked. So we can quickly enter the hours by just adding hours. Here we're going to choose our category. So we are our maintenance hours. We worked for four hours. This is a non-billable, so we're just going to go to this drop down and select non-billable. And here under resources where we're going to select our name. So you can have different resources that have helped you with this work order. It's not a problem as well. So here I'm just going to search by resource. You can search by resource description or ID. In this case, I'm going to change to description and type my name. Okay. Select my name. My hours are in. Again, I can add more hours if I needed to. Items, these are items you've used straight from inventory. So here I'm going to go down to the drop down. In this case, you have some different ways to search for your items by using that drop down here. Um, I know the item number starts with an MT, so I'm just going to put in MT. It's going to give me everything that begins with MT. And here you can see I'm going to use that brake drum. For time of this demo, I'm not going to add another item, but you can add as many items as you need to. Non-billable, I had to pick the site, quantity one, and then I'm going to hit done. So now I have my inventory item that I've used. Now add expense is great if you have any additional expenses. So maybe you had to uh, go to a different vendor and you had to, um, I'm not sure, However, you maybe you had to have some fuel on this additional. So we're, we're just going to put in some cost here so I can show you how this works. But a lot of companies will have additional expense outside of a fuel charge or if we had to do any travel to the actual um, site. So just depends on your company. So let's do $25 and hit done. So now we have our expenses on this work order on this specific tractor recorded. Now we're going to go back, go back again. I'm using this little arrow here. I'm going to go back into my work order because I'm done with this work order. I just need to click this here. Let's go back one. It's not letting me open it back up. Go to that work order. Yep, so I'm opening up the work order to change the state again. And now we're changing the state from in progress to completed. So you see, you see I had to refresh that to get that completed because you can't go from a scheduled work order, in this case, the way that we have it designed in this demo environment. So you, your customer can, uh, I'm sorry, the organization who is using asset management can design this any way they'd like. In this case, I designed it to where I couldn't have a work order go from scheduled to completed. It had to go from scheduled to in progress, then completed. So now I can complete. I have it completed at 848.
that's complete if I come here into FNO. And if I was to refresh this, I can see that it's been completed. I can come here to maintenance job notes on the project and see repair brake drum, repaired brake drum and air pump. You can also see the attachment. So here's a preview of my mouse, which was my engine. <laughs> So this is really great. It, again, the, the mobile app works great in conjunction with um, uh, D365. So now I want to show you how we see the cost on this project. So here under journals, we're going to have a finance um, manager or finance person come in here, review everything looks good, and come in here and post these journals. You can post directly from project management and accounting. Let's see what that error says. Oh, we need a, a warehouse. Most inventory will need that warehouse. So now we can save, Let's close these errors and post. And we can as well. So that error wouldn't come up in a normal environment. We can definitely make sure of that. So now we have our journals posted, but we want to see those uh, transactions on that asset. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can come up here to project transactions on the work order level and see these are the transactions that posted. So here's the hours, maintenance hours. Here's the items that was used and here's the fuel. So I can quickly see on my hours. And again, this is just however your company is set up to post, but we debited cost of goods sold and credit our pay payroll allocation, which is great. Maintenance items here on our voucher, we debited our cost of goods sold and credited our inventory, which is perfect. And here as well, we have a voucher for a, our expense, which is going to credit our GNA and debit our cost of goods sold, which is perfect as well. So this is how our project management works with our asset management to track our cost for specific assets. So I could essentially come here to my asset by just clicking this asset. Takes me into the asset itself within the asset management workspace. And I can essentially see all my project transactions for this specific asset. For this demo, these are the only, this work order was the only um, project transactions. Hope that you enjoyed this demonstration. It was my pleasure bringing it to you. I look forward to um, sharing with you the next video.